The other week, I posted a poll asking people if they thought the introduction of more budget full-frame cameras would kill off APS-C or not. And about 40% of people thought that it would. Firstly, APS-C is unlikely to ever completely disappear, because you've got the likes of Fuji who don't offer full frame, but they do offer APS-C. Sony has a pretty well-established APS-C lineup already within the E-mount, and Nikon has recently added an APS-C option to their Z-mount in the form of the Z50. But in reality, the main catalyst for this discussion is usually surrounding Canon and their APS-C mirrorless, because they're currently running two different mounts, one for full frame and one for APS-C. So really their options are either bring out an APS-C RF body, keep the two sensor sizes on a separate system, or drop APS-C altogether. I personally don't think we'll see APS-C disappear. However, I do think that we will see a, a change in the dynamics of the camera market surrounding it. But before we get into discussing that, first let me take a second to tell you about Skillshare, who are sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with a vast array of classes across a multitude of topics, covering things like photography, video production, web design, art and writing, to name but a few. The classes, on average, run for between 30 to 60 minutes, and each one is broken up into chapters that you can come back to as and when you please, which makes them easy to fit around even the busiest schedules. There are classes to suit complete beginners, as well as those already experienced in the relevant topics, but are just wanting to brush up on their skills. Basically, Skillshare has something for everyone. But if you don't believe me, click the link in the description down below and you could get a one month free trial to test it out for yourself. Now, there's a natural cycle to technology and not just in cameras. It applies to phones and GPUs and pretty much everything. A company starts with one model of a product and then they release a newer version that is better than the predecessor. Otherwise, what would be the point? But then usually after a few generations, you end up with a huge void left underneath it, so they produce a, a more stripped back version at a lower price, and then the cycle starts again. For example, when Canon first launched their first full-frame DSLR, the 1DS, back in 2002, it arrived with a price tag of $8,000 at the time, which is around fifteen grand in today's money. By comparison, they've just released the R3 at only $6,000, with far superior specifications. And then you've got full-frame cameras like the RP, which was launched at only $1,200. So there is little doubt that full-frame is becoming cheaper. But there are also rumors that Canon are working on an even more budget-friendly full-frame camera with a price tag of only about $800 which puts it right around the price point of most APS-C cameras. And it's widely accepted that larger sensors generally equals overall better image quality. And the big advantages of APS-C versus full frame has always been considered to be one, a cheaper price point, two, smaller size camera bodies because the sensor is much smaller, the body can be made more compact, and three, smaller lenses, for the smaller sensor, so the whole system is overall much more compact. However, if they're bringing out a full-frame camera with the price point around an APS-C camera, they're already making bodies like the Canon RP, the Sony a7C, which, whilst they're still slightly bigger than an APS-C, they're much closer relative in terms of size compared to like the old full-frame DSLRs. And with the shift to mirrorless, we've also seen a huge reduction in the size of a lot of lenses too. So surely, all the advantages of APS-C have basically disappeared and full frame is the obvious choice moving forward. Not quite, I don't think. For sure, full frame has come down greatly in price in the 20 years since its introduction, but the exact same can be said for APS-C. Smaller sensors will always be cheaper to produce than larger ones. Sure, the sensor is only one aspect of the whole price of a camera, but APS-C will still be cheaper. 
For example, the A7 III was launched at a price tag of $2,000, while the A6600 is very similar in specs, but was only $1,400 at launch. Nikon recently released the Z50 APS-C camera and the Z5 full frame. The Z5 is $1,400, whilst the Z50 is less than $900. Now, yes, that would mean that an $800 Canon full-frame mirrorless would be cheaper than an A6600 or a Z50, but really that's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. For starters, it's different manufacturers, plus it takes no consideration of the specifications of the camera, which is the main reason I don't think APS-C is going anywhere. For starters, we have absolutely no idea what this purely hypothetical £800 camera would actually offer in terms of specs. The RP has the relatively poor 26 megapixel sensor from the 6D2, and I say relatively poor because, well, it's worse than most in dynamic range, for example, and it only shoots 5 frames a second, had cropped 4K a 1 4,000th of a second shutter, a single card slot, and a crap battery. Which, at the time, fell sort of in line with its price point. My point being is you get what you pay for. And sure, an $800 full frame might be very affordable and will likely have good image quality, but it's going to be very limited on specifications compared to, say, an $800 APS-C camera. Then there is an advantage of smaller sensors which doesn't really get talked about much, and that's readout speed. Slower readout speeds will limit the maximum shooting speeds that your camera can achieve, as well as how susceptible it is to the likes of rolling shutter. And whilst resolution does greatly slow down readout speeds because there's more pixels to draw information from, larger sensors also slow down the readout speed as well. It's why we're only just seeing 30 frames a second being managed in full frame cameras, and yet 30 frames a second bursts have been around in smaller sensor cameras for years. And medium formats can only manage about 5 frames a second. Obviously, nobody is actually wanting 30 frames a second out of a medium format, but the point still stands. It's also the reason that full frame cameras are generally limited to about 120 frames a second video, or say 240 in the case of the a7s3 only in s and q mode yet my phone can shoot up to 480 frames a second at 720p sure it looks as mushy as a rat turd that's been pushed through a cheese grater but it can still manage four times the shooting speed point being all things equal aps-c sensors will allow for faster speeds at the same price point compared to a full frame. Yes, people could say, well, if you want more speed, then pay more money and get a higher end full frame camera. But if you're someone who's a hobbyist action shooter, then speed might be absolutely crucial, but image quality, not so much. And you'd probably prefer to sacrifice some image quality over a kidney. And that, for me, would be the big target market for an APS-C RF camera, such as an R7, as a cheaper alternative to the R3, but at a price point similar to, say, the R6. Kind of in the same way as the relationship between the 7D to the 1D. Now, there is then the topic of lenses that some people have put forward as an argument against the idea of an APS-C RF camera, stating that, such a camera would then mean Canon needing to develop a whole new range of APS-C specific lenses while still trying to push full frame lenses and already having an APS-C M mount system. Except I'm not convinced you would necessarily need APS-C specific lenses, especially for a camera like the R7. Certainly, some people might like the option of it, but most of the time that I've seen people shooting with the likes of a 7D, it's pretty much always attached to the back of a full frame lens like a 70 to 200 or a 100 to 400. Because with such a camera appealing mostly to action shooters, they generally want action suitable lenses, which are generally only really found for full frame. I mean, I shot with Canon APS-C DSLRs for years when I first started out, and the only APS-C specific lenses that I ever bought 
were the two kit lenses that came with the camera. Everything else from that point on was full frame lenses, which then made moving to a full frame body a whole lot easier, which is still a very real argument for Canon developing a full lineup of APS-C options in the RF system. Currently, all the budget options are really in the M series. So anyone who is starting out, most people can't justify the really high price points of full frame. But then if anyone then invests in the M mount and they then want to move to full frame, they will need to sell everything and start from scratch, which can be done but it gives them a lot more flexibility to choose that maybe they want to move to a different manufacturer. Whereas if they were already invested in an RF APS-C system, they're more likely to stick with RF when moving into full frame. But even if that doesn't happen, I still think bringing an action-focused R7 into the lineup, even without any APS-C lenses, would still be a big hit. After all, the 7D was one of Canon's most successful cameras. Yes, Canon have the likes of the M62, which is a pretty fast camera, but the M series lenses are limited in choice, so users would then be reliant on older DSLR lenses and an adapter, which is fine for now, but in years to come, that is going to present a problem. So, in summary, I don't think we will see APS-C cameras completely disappear, and I still think we'll see a Canon APS-C RF camera However, I do think the dynamics surrounding it will change so that there's a lot less focus on lower end APS-C camera bodies and APS-C lenses and instead focus on full frame lenses and maybe a few higher end APS-C cameras for those who want the speed but on a budget. But those are just my opinions, of course. If you think differently, please feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, please consider supporting this channel by clicking the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already done so. And then hopefully, we'll see you in the next video.